Bible. All right, we are about to get started, glory to God, what a wonderful day. everyone today. I pray that all is well because I tell you we are in a good place at a good time where we're going to experience God's goodness and God's mercies today. Glory to his name. Amen. Glory to his name. Let me just get this right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, how's everyone today? It's good to be with you, good to be able to come to you and bring you the living word of God. Because we know that the word of God is alive. The word of God is health and healing to all our flesh. Glory to his name. There we go. Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. How you doing today? Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. And we glorify you. Because we realize, Father, that all things do work together for good to them that love you and to those who are called according to your purpose. So therefore, Father, we worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. We exalt you. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. And Father, we thank you for this day. For this is the day that thou had made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, today we're talking about, you know, we've been talking about faith for a little while now. Amen. And so we're going to continue along that line. Amen. We're going to continue along the line because you see, glory to God. Michelle, how you doing? Glory to God. Gay, how you doing? Glory to God. Amen. And I want to just continue along this line because I know that this is an area where we are all going to need in the very, very near future. Faith is so important for us right now 
because if we don't have faith, we will not be able to receive the things that we are believing God for. Faith is so important. Amen. And some people say, well, I don't know how to work my faith. I don't know what is faith. I don't know if I, don't know if I have enough of it. Amen. Well, faith is so important that you need to know that you have faith and that you have enough of faith. Amen. Because faith is one of the main things that God uses to meet our needs. Amen. Faith is one of the most important things that God used to meet our need. Amen. And we need to understand that because it's a very, very important element of our Christian makeup. Amen. It's a, of our Christian life. Glory to God. I got the. I want to uh, just uh, encourage you today because you see, when we understand what God is saying to us, we will never be without or miss out on what God promised us. God is a God that supply all our need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. He don't supply some of our need, but He supply all our need. And you know, it is done by faith. Amen. Everything that God does is through faith. Through faith. It was through faith that the world was framed. It was through faith that Abraham conceived. Amen. That, that Abraham, uh, Sarah, uh, it was after God had spoke the word. They believed the word, folks. They believed the word. So we got to come to the point to actually believe the word. When we can believe the word, we can see the manifestation of God's word working in our lives and on our behalf. Amen. So I want to encourage you today because you see, you are a product of God. You are created in the image of God. There's nothing lacking in you. Only thing you need to know is how to bring, uh, how to activate that what he's already placed within you. Once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen, once you became a born again child of God, once you began to uh, uh, hear the word of God, to be involved with the word of God the, the nature of God came to be a living reality in your heart amen so we need to learn how to activate that faith how to walk according to the word of God and allow the promise of God to manifest in our lives God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all <laughs> they said God has blessed him and his wife glory to God I believe that Amen. I believe that. Because, see, we serve a good God. God wants to bless his people. God wants to bring you to a place where you've never been before. How many of you are ready to go to the next level in your Christian walk? You ready to go to the next level? Amen. Then I want you to open your Bible with me to the book of Hebrew, chapter 11. Hebrew, chapter 11. Amen. We're, just going, we're going to talk about faith a little bit today. Yes. And I pray that your heart is ready to receive because I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm looking for a miracle. You know why I'm looking for a miracle? Because I'm still in need of a building. I'm looking for a building that I can uh, get, get, my, get my act back, get, get back in order. Amen. But either, either, either or, I'm still going to go forth right where I am. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be, uh, anxious for nothing. I'm, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be patient and wait on the Lord. Amen. So you need to understand patience is a virtue. If you're going to wait for God's best, for God's goodness to manifest in your life, then it all has to do with faith. Faith is God's way of saying, I will. <laughs> amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. And so, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse number 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the title of our message today is, uh, Now Faith Is. Amen? Now Faith Is. So we said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. Another a modern translation reads, Faith is giving substance to the things hoped for. Faith is giving substance to the things 
hopeful. Amen. So we need to realize that it is our faith that gives substance to the things that we are hoping for. So that's why faith is so important. If we don't allow our faith to be active, then how can it give substance to the things we're hoping for? What are you looking for? What are you believing for? Faith has to be operating. Faith has to not only be operating, but faith has to be active in our lives. What are you hoping for? See, that hope is somewhere out in the future. That faith is going to bring it into the present. <clears throat> Let me say that again. What you're hoping for is somewhere in the future, but your faith is going to bring it into the present, or you might say in the now, in the now, amen, God wants you to prepare to receive what he has promised you now, amen, if I'm believing God for healing, I'm not looking to the future for my healing, amen, I'm not just putting it out somewhere in the future that God can heal me, because God said, by his stripes, you are healed. And what's that telling me? That I'm healed now. Amen. I'm healed now. Glory to God. Amen. So when I'm looking at faith, I'm looking at God's way of meeting the need of his people. I'm looking at a way that God uses to meet the need of his people. Amen. So we see that we see this truth throughout the Bible in, in, in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, we read, we, we have a, a number of scriptures illustrates the very uh, clear illustrate very clearly and giving us good solid foundation word how God moves on our behalf hallelujah God wants to do for you more than you can ever imagine amen God wants to take you to a place that you've never been God wants to bring you into a, a realm of operating in his presence that you've never walked in. And I'm telling you that God is going to do it for you and he's going to do it for you now. How many of you believe in God for something that you've never had, something that you always knew that he had, that you always had a desire for, it, but you never was able to obtain it? You never was able to receive it. Well, let me tell you something right now. You're getting ready for your breakthrough. You've been running behind this thing. You've been doing all the research. You've been doing all the, the necessary thing that you need to do to see what could you qualify for this thing. And God said, you was qualified even before you start searching for it. He said, I have given you everything that you need. I have placed within you every desire that you have. It was me that placed them in you, said the Lord. And I will bring them to pass if you can dare to believe it. Glory to God. Oh, I dare to believe. I dare to believe. Glory to God. I am a believer. Amen. Say that with me. I am a believer. Say it with me. Say it again. I am a believer. See, because when you realize that you are a believer, then that, that eradicate all the doubt. That, that do away with all the doubt. Amen. So if you believe in God for a new business, you believe in God for, for a relationship to reestablish, you believe in God for a healing, what do you believe in God for? Amen. God said, I will. I will. Amen. And that word, I will, is a powerful word. It's a powerful word. Just like God said, tell, tell them that I am has sent you. That what he told Moses to tell a Pharaoh. Tell them that I am has sent you. That word, I am, is a powerful word. Amen. Powerful word. Just like the word, I will. That word, I will, is a powerful word. See, God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Uh, I got my sister Glira on the line. Amen. And I'm coming to Alabama very soon. Matter of fact, it's not too far away. On the 6th and the 7th, we're going to be in Decatur. But on the 5th, we're going to be in Florence, Alabama. Amen. We're going to be in Florence, Alabama on the 5th. But on the 6th, we're going to be in Decatur, Alabama, and also the 7th, doing a, a, a conference, amen, a prayer and healing conference in Decatur, Alabama. So if you are in that area, I'm encouraging you to come out. We're going to be at the Double Tree Hotel on 6th Avenue in Decatur, Alabama, amen. So I'm encouraging you all to come out and be with us because I'm telling you, you're going to walk in one way, you're going to walk out another way. God is so good. 
His mercies endure forever. And God is going to work a miracle among you that's going to just touch your heart like you've never experienced before. You're not going to walk out like you come in. Glory to God. I can guarantee, I can promise you that. Because God is not a man that he shall lie. His word is true. Amen. So when we look at the word, when we look at now faith is, what we, we need to understand that God wants us to operate in faith now. Amen. Because it was now when God said, let there be. God didn't wait for it to happen somewhere out in the future. When God said, let there be light, God expected, God expected it right then. And guess what, folks? He didn't have to wait till next month. He didn't have to wait a month after he had spoke the word for the word to manifest. Yeah, no, 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 no. He didn't have to wait for another week for the word to manifest. He didn't have to wait for another millennium before the word manifests. When he spoke, the word stood fast and produced what he desired. Faith is acting. Amen. I like what doc, how Dr. Ritz, Mark Cirillo said. Matter of fact, I'm going to be with him on the first, second, third, and the fourth of next month over in Chicago. Amen. I'm going to be with Dr. Cirillo at the World Conference. Amen. Uh, so at School of Ministry. So we are inviting you to come and to be a part in this service also where he's going to be talking about the legacy, going to be talking about the, the baptism in the Holy Spirit and uh, it got all these wonderful guests coming in from all around the world. Amen. You want to be a part of this conference. It's a, wor- a life changing conference. Amen. So now, faith, what is it? How does it, how does it work? Amen. Faith is... Faith is activated through words. Faith is activated through words. Now, I want to take you, I want to show you something here. Go with me to the book of Mark. Book of Mark. In the book of Mark, I want you to look, I want you to go here with me. Chapter 11. Book of Mark, chapter 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, in the book of Mark, chapter 11, and I want you to look here at verse number 22. Verse number 22 said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, See, I want you to notice how many times this verse is saying something. I want you to know how many times this verse is saying something. Amen. Look at verse number 11. It says, Now, uh, verse number 23. This is Mark chapter 11, verse number 23. And it says, glory to God. Hallelujah. For verily I say unto you, underline that, I say, that whosoever shall say, underline, shall say, unto unto this mountain be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith, underline, he saith. Amen. Shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Underline that. There's four times in this one verse that words show that you have to be saying something in order to see the manifestation of it. Amen. What was he what was he what was he talking about? What was he talking about? Well, he was talking about, he was talking about. He was referring to a mountain at this point. Because if we look back in the scriptures, we go back up to a verse number, we go back up to, we go, we go back up to a verse number 12, it says, and on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Talking about Jesus, he was traveling for a very important ministerial obligation. Amen. Knows what he was, knows what was going on here. Jesus was ministering. He was talking to his disciples, but he was hungry in his travel. And he came up on a fig tree, verse number 23. Now, excuse me, verse number 13, Mark number 11, verse number 13, Mark chapter 11, verse number 13. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. For the time of figs was not yet. Amen. Glory to God. Now, Jesus is about to demonstrate the power of words. And so, as he demonstrates the power of words, he is acting in the same manner 
that his father acted in the beginning. Glory to God. Are y'all are y'all understand what I'm saying? Because this is very important that you that you see this. Because you see, if you don't get this, you will never understand how to activate your faith. Amen. You got to understand your faith works in in corresponding with your words. Your faith work and correspond with your words. So your words can 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 help you, can benefit you, or your words can defeat you. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, we are snared with the words of our mouth. We are brought into captivity with our own words. Amen. With our own words. So we need to understand that the wrong words can bring you into bondage, but the right words can set you free. <laughs> That's powerful, isn't it? I know it is. Amen. So let look. Let's, let's look here. Let's see here. Glory to God. Let's look right here. Uh, uh, Mark chapter eleven and verse number thirteen. Knows what he said. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came. If happily, he find he should find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. Knows what he said. For the time of figs was not yet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. So now Jesus is about to show the disciples something very powerful. Very powerful. Amen. Something very powerful. Now notice what he says right here in verse number 14. And Jesus answered and said unto it. Jesus answered and said unto it. My friend. Jesus is not talking to the men now. He's not talking to his disciples. He's talking to a tree. He's talking to a literal tree. A fig tree at that. Amen. A fruit tree. One that is able to produce something that is nourishment to the body. And he came to this tree looking for fruit. And when he came to it, he found nothing on it. Nothing on it. Oh, and at that season, I was, I'm told that figs, Normally, it's on a tree when the leaves is on the tree. Amen. He, fought, he saw the tree full of leaves, and so he was expecting the figs up on the tree at the same time. Because, you see, I have a fig tree in my yard, and I, and I can tell you the truth that I understand what he was talking about. Amen. I understand what he was talking about. Figs and the leaves, they all, they, they, when, they, when the tree, when the leaves, when the tree putting out the leaves, the figs is already producing, already growing. Amen. I understand what he's talking about. So now we see here that in verse number 23, in verse number 23, Jesus, let's, no, let's back up verse number, verse number, uh, let's back up verse number 20, verse number 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, see, Jesus was on his way back out of town now. He's on his way back out. He said, and as they passed by, Peter, glory to God, and as they passed by, Verse number 20. One more time. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root. They saw, now all the 12 disciples, all the disciples, all the men that were with Jesus when he passed by the fig tree, now they're on the way back by the fig tree, and they all saw the fig tree both times. Both times. They saw the fig tree when before Jesus spoke to it, and they saw the fig tree after Jesus spoke to it. Amen. And now they are on their way back out of town. And they come to this place where the fig tree was. And notice what he said right here in verse number verse number uh verse number 21. And Peter called unto remembrance and said unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed. Notice what he said. Behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Amen. Notice Peter caught what had happened to the fig tree. He saw that the fig tree was dying. He saw that the life was leaving the fig tree. And he saw that no one touched the tree physically, but Jesus Touch the tree with words. Words are the most powerful thing in the universe. It was words that was 
used to create the universe. The Milky Way, the 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 the, the, the space, the stars, amen, the sun, the moon. It was words that was used to bring all of this about. Amen. Not uh, 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 some uh, earthly means. It was words. It was God's words. And God has said that I created you in my image and after my likeness. See, God has created us in his image and after his likeness. His nature is in us, folks. We have what it takes. To get the job done. All things work together for good. To them that love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. So faith is looking. At something that you cannot see. Because hope. You can you can have hope in your heart. But you, can't, you really can't see what you're hoping for. Because it's somewhere in your future. Amen. It is somewhere in your future. And so we look right here. And Mark now. Mark chapter 11. And verse number 22, Jesus said, And Jesus answered and said unto them, talking to his disciples, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Amen. Verse 23, For verily I say, Because see, just like he spoke to that fig tree, he's speaking faith into these men. He spoke to the fig tree, and the fig tree withered. Now he's speaking to the men. Glory to God. My God, this is a powerful message that God has given us today. Notice what he's doing right here in verse number 23. And verily, for verily I say unto you, see, when he spoke to the fig tree, the victory did exactly what Jesus said. Now he's speaking to the men. He said, verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain. See, he's, in, he's, he's imparting, he's, there's impartation taking place right now as Jesus is talking to his disciples impartations and then then they begin to think you think you you really mean that I could say to this mountain you think that it's possible God said look look what he said for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say see he's not only talking to the twelve that was with him but he's talking to whosoever shall act upon what he said to the twelve that was with him glory to God can't you see that God wants you to activate your faith. Faith, as Dr. Cirilla said, faith is a fact, but faith is also an act. Amen. So you have to activate that faith in order to get the results that you are believing for. Because what you're believing for is somewhere in your future. What you're believing for is somewhere in your future. But you need to be able to reach into your future and bring it into your present. And that what faith is going to do for you. That's what faith does. Amen. Faith take a hold of the things of the spiritual realm that's in your future. And because God has already released them into your life. But you just got to know how to get them. You got to know how to reach into the spiritual realm and grab what God has already released unto to you. Glory to God. It's already yours. It's just like healing. It's already yours. He bore your sickness. He carried your diseases. And by his stripes you are healed. Amen. You are healed. And so if you are healed and the first and first Peter said you were healed. Amen. And Isaiah says you are healed. So if you are healed and you were healed that means you are healed now. Your healing is is he had, he's not going to take it away just because you don't understand it. And that's why he's sending me to you right now to help you to understand how to receive the promise that he has already made available to you. You receive it by faith. Amen. You receive it by faith. God wants you to understand that all his promises are yes and amen. They are yes and amen. Amen. So now let's look here in verse number 23 once again. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. Now notice what he said right here. And shall not doubt in his heart. I'm going to read that again. Because you see, this will determine whether or not you are walking in faith. Because there's 
in your heart, your heart produces two things. It produces faith and it produces doubt. Amen. Now you're going to have to discern which one that you're going to cleave to. Because when you go to the doctor, <clears throat> you go to the doctor, you, you walk in there feeling real good. Now he done, done, he done sent you to, and got your blood tests and all that stuff. And he done, now it's time for you to go visit the doctor. He's going to explain your blood test, what he found in your blood and so forth and so on. Now you go to him all happy, thinking he's going to give you good news. But, amen. And when you see the doctor, the doctor tells you that, oh, look like I found some, some cancer in your blood. Amen. Then all of a sudden, your joy, that peace, that 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 faith that you was walking in all of a sudden has come under attack where you were where you were believing and where you was acting now now your now your faith all of a sudden come under attack because of what someone has said amen because of what someone has said now what you got to do you got to step back and recuperate. And you got to remember that God's word is true. God cannot lie. God is not a man. God cannot lie. God is a spirit. Amen. And so we need to understand that. Amen. So as we begin to understand that, we can, we can hear what the doctor is saying. But we can guard our heart. We can guard our heart. Amen. Because the heart is going to produce faith or your heart is going to produce doubt. Notice what he said right here. Mark chapter 11, verse number 23. Both of these are produced in the same area, which is the heart. And believe me, folks, they are produced the same way with words. Words are powerful. Words can bring you to a place where you can receive all the promises of God. Or words can bring you to a place where you become so depressed, so ill, so uh, unworthy. <laughs> words can cause you to think less than what God created you to think of yourself. Amen? But we want to think as God created us to think of ourselves. We want to see ourselves healed. We want to see ourselves wealthy. We want to see ourselves healthy. We want to see ourselves walking in divine health and healing. Amen? Regardless of what it looked like. Because we know we serve a God that cannot lie. And if he says you're healed, then believe me, folks. The word is true. You are healed. Amen? You are healed. So he says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain... Be thou moon and be thou cast into the sea. Now you need to put a circle around this area and shall not doubt in his heart. You need to circle that because you see, you need to understand that God does not get pleasure out of seeing you doubt his word. In other words, you're saying, God, I know that your word said this, but I don't trust it. I don't believe that it'll work for me. I've walked in this situation for so long and I don't believe this word will work for me. What are you doing? You are casting down the life force that comes through believing the word of God. Oh, but once you come in line with what God has said, once you begin to believe what God has said, once you begin to tap into the truth of what God has said, you will experience the manifestation of of God's miracle working power simply because you have tapped in to the knowledge of how to activate your faith. Well, how do you activate your faith? I'm going to show you now. I want to take you to the book of Genesis in the book of Genesis chapter 1. We're going to explore the same thing that, that uh, Jesus did with the disciples here concerning the fig tree and then he showed them the mountain that if you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. 
Amen. And he showed he he showed him how not how how to guard the heart that doubt would not interfere. Amen. Amen. So you see, God don't want doubt to interfere with what you believe for because the Bible said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, if it's something that you're hoping for, that means that doubt still have a way of getting around because you see, you got to deal with that realm of hope. That realm of hope is somewhere out in your future. That hope is somewhere in your future. But your faith is now. And faith is going to reach out just like a, you know, just like, just like a, 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 you want to, you, you, you're on a farm and you want to, you got that, that rope and you want to, you take it, you're going to uh, catch that calf that is trying to get away. You're going to throw that loose around that calf's neck. And you're going to catch him. Amen. And you're going to bring him, hold him until you can get to him. And you're going to tie his leg just like the, uh, the cowboys do. Amen. Faith is that lens that is going out to take a hold of that what you're hoping for. It's going to take a hold. It's going to grab it and you're going to pull it right back into your present. Faith is something that God wants to use in your life right now to get you what you need now. Not somewhere in the future. Because if you're in pain, you don't want to look to the future for your healing. You want to look for it now. You want to look for it now. Amen. Because now faith is. And so now let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, it says right here, in Genesis chapter 1, it said, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now notice here, and God said, you need to underline verse number 3, because see, God is starting to talk, and every time God opens up his mouth and says something, you need to understand what God is saying. Amen? And everything that he say come to pass. This is the most important thing you need to realize because it's the same thing that, that Jesus demonstrated over here in, Act, in the book of Mark chapter 11. Jesus demonstrated what he saw his father do. Amen? And so we are God's children. We are his offspring. We have the same ability because the nature of God is in us. We are created in his image and after his likeness. Amen? And so... What Jesus did, he did what he saw his father do. He saw him speak to what he wanted. Saw him speak into existence what he wanted. And so Jesus spoke into existence to that tree what he desired to see to come to pass. And when he spoke, folks, the next day as they passed by, Peter called to remembrance and said, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. He saw the results of speaking to that tree. See, you can have what you say. And that's why... So many people are sick because they are having what they say. They're talking more about what they got, what the doctor has said to them, than what they actually expecting to happen. They're talking about their sickness more than they're talking about the cure. The word of God is the cure of your sickness. The word of God is the cure of your diseases. You believe me? <laughs> Amen. I'm quite sure you do. Amen. So now, as we look at verse number three, it says, And God said, Let there be what? Light. Let there be light. Now that light appeared. That light appeared. Amen. Now, notice what he said in verse number six. And God said, Let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters, and let the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Amen. So God is speaking, folks. He's speaking. He's showing us how to activate our faith. We have to speak what we believe to be true concerning God's word. We have to declare it, folks. We have to declare it. Amen. Look at verse number, verse number 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Everything God is saying is happening. It's happening. Wait, amen? Look at verse number 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding seed, and let the fruit trees yield fruit after 
his kind whose seed is in it, in itself, upon the earth. And it was so. Everything God is saying is coming to pass. Notice he's saying something. What is he doing? He's speaking faith. He's activating faith. He's showing us the power of faith. How faith works. Faith works through words. Faith works through words. Amen. And so when we activate our faith, words begin to... The, oh God, she came out of Bashiach. The angels take a hold of those words just like they're loose, that lance that you're throwing out to bring into manifestation that what you're hoping for, that faith is bringing that to pass right now in your life. And that's why it's so important, folks, that we understand the power of our words. Look what it said in verse number 14. And God said, let, let there be light in the firmament of the heavens, of the heaven." To divide the day from the from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. God is showing us the power of words. My friend Lydian is on the line. Ah, uh, glory! Good to see you, my dear sister. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Now, 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 notice here. Notice here. Notice here in verse number twenty. I'm still talking about, I'm still talking about, we're in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 20 now. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that had life. Notice everything God says come to pass. Everything God says come to pass. Amen. Now notice what he says here in verse number 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind. God is still speaking, folks. He's still speaking. Now look at verse number 26. I said all of that to get, I'm talking, I'm sharing with you, everything that God was saying came to pass. Everything that God was saying came to pass. That's the power of words, folks. That's our faith in action. That's acting on what we believe to be true. Look at verse number 26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Glory to God. Glory to God. When God made man, God made man a spirit. God made man a spirit. Oh, glory to God. Oh, you, oh, you want me to show you what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, glory to God. Well, let, let me finish here first. Let me finish here first. Then I'm going to take you to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But first, let's finish right here. Amen. Glory to God. That scripture is just coming up in my spirit. And I'm just going I'm, I'm to have to take you there. Chapter 5. Uh, 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 excuse me. We're still in Genesis chapter 1. Now, verse number 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. See, man was made by God speaking. Man was made through words that God spoke. Amen. We wasn't. We wasn't just. That we wasn't just. We didn't just appear. We didn't just appear. <clears throat> but God said, "Let us make man. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness." And then He said. And let them have dominion over all, over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. I like that word, boy, because see, God is showing us that He gives us power over all the creeps. <laughs> you ever seen a, you, people creeping around you? God gave you power over them creeps, so don't let it bother you. Amen. God has given you power over everything that he created. So when you begin to act in faith, you begin to act like your father. You begin to act in the nature of your father. When God said, 
that you can have what you say. <clears throat> he meant that. Let's go back to Mark chapter 11, verse number 24. Mark chapter 11, verse number 24. Amen. <clears throat> because you, you see, you need, to, you, need to, you need to have this in your, you need to let this sink in your spirit. You need to let this drop down in your spirit. Mark chapter 11, verse number 24 now, he said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Amen. So if you're praying, you're saying something. If you're praying, then you're saying something. Amen. So let's put Mark chapter 11, verse number 22 through 24. Let's put them all together now. Let's read them all together. It says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse number 24. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And ye shall have them. Amen. So we see that everything that God intends for us to receive is a product of what we are saying. Is a product of what we are saying. And that's why so many people are missing out because they're saying the wrong thing. They're saying the wrong thing. And getting results that they really don't want in their life. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And so I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you today because you see, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. God created you in, in his image and after his likeness. Well, what is God is like? Let's look at glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. I want to take you, I got to show you this. I got to show you. Amen. Because you try to, you, you, I see, I see I got you thinking now. I see you thinking now, and you need to, and so in John chapter 4, in John chapter 4, see God created us in his image, not his likeness, and what is God? God is the spirit, amen, God is the spirit, and so now we see here, how do we, how do we, how do we come to God? We got to realize that God is the spirit, and he created us in his image, not his likeness, so the Bible said, well how do we know that, but look, look what it says right here in, in John chapter 4. John chapter 4, and look at verse number uh, 21. Now let's just start verse number, verse number 19. Amen. Verse number 19. John 4, verse 19. The woman said unto him, Sir, we perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, Believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. And he said right here in verse number 24. God is a spirit. God is, he didn't say, he didn't say God is some spirits. No, he said God is a spirit. That's signifying that he's only one. Amen. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit so you got to realize that you are a spirit and you're going to worship God you want to get the results that God wants you to get then you got to learn how to tap into the spirit which you are a spirit because you are a spirit amen and it said verse number 24 God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth amen and in truth now let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 
Oh, glory to God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, there we go. I want you to look here at verse number, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 23. Verse number 23. And it said, and, and they verily, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole, notice what he said now, spirit and soul and body. See, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in this body. See, this is the house, this is the house where I live. The real man is like God. I am a spirit, and so are you. So God's intent for us to learn how to operate in faith because faith is of the spiritual realm. Doubt is of the natural realm. Faith is of the supernatural. Doubt and unbelief is of the physical. Amen. So if we're going to receive the promises that God has prepared for us to receive, we must understand that we are created in the image and in the same likeness of God or as God. Amen. And when we can understand that, we can see that God has given us dominion and God has given us the power to declare. He has given us the power to decree. He has given us the power to speak. Look with me in the book of Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Bring me to another point that God is showing us right here. Amen. Matthew chapter 8. Now let's look at verse, verse number verse number 5. Matthew chapter 8 and verse number 5. And it says, And Jesus, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant Lied at home sick of palsy, grievously tormented, and Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only. The power of the spoken word, my friend, you see, we have been given God's ability and reside within us. And only thing we need to do. Is learn how to release God's ability. Through our words. Because that's the way our faith is activated. Through our words. Words are powerful. Words are one of the most powerful things. Of the universe. God used words to create. Everything that you see. And now he's showing you. That he has given you. Power, amen, power over every circumstance that you face in life. Power to change the way you're speaking. Power to change the way you're living. And all that can be done through your words. Your words. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so the centurion, he showed, he's showing us the power of words. He said, notice what he said. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. The centurion understood the authority that was given to man. Because he was a man under authority. And he saw that this man was operating in authority. And he knew that this man didn't have to go under his roof in order for the word to manifest. Because faith is a servant that works when we Use it properly. Amen. What do you mean faith is a servant? Let's go to the book of Luke. Glory to God. Chapter 17. Luke chapter. Oh my God. This is rich. I'm telling you. You need to. You need to. You need to get a hold of this. You need to share this. Because faith. Is what you need. Right now. To restore your. Health. 
Faith is what you need right now to restore your relationship. Faith is what you need right now to restore your marriage. Faith is what you need right now to restore your children. Amen. Faith is what you need right now to get back on right track with God. You might think, well, Pastor, you don't understand. I, 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 when I started walking with God, I came under so much pressure. I just totally backslide. I mean, I walked away from God. I did more things than I, than I did before I got saved. And, I, and I, I, don't, I just don't see how God can receive me back right now. But let me tell you something. I want to encourage you that God loves you. And that He wants you to return to Him. And when you return to Him, He'll return to you. Amen. I'm going to show you that in the Word in just a few minutes. Amen. But right now, I want you to see this. Because you see, you are very important. And your actions right now is going to determine whether or not you're going to receive what you're believing for. So it says right here in the book of Luke Gospel, chapter 17. And let's look at verse number verse number 4. It says, now let's go back to verse number 3. Luke chapter 14, chapter 17, excuse me, Luke chapter 17, verse number 3. And it says, Take heed to yourselves. If ye, if ye, if if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and in and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. And now the disciples knew that if someone was being redundant and 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 trying to deceive you or trying to hurt you in, in, in this kind of way, it would be hard to forgive them. Amen. They, they, they know that it's, it's not so easy to forgive them. So what Jesus said, look at verse number five. Look at verse number five. Verse number five said, And the apostles said unto, unto the Lord, Increase our faith. Because you see, if you don't, if you know that it's going to be hard for you to do it from the natural, then you know faith is not natural. Faith is supernatural. So you can forgive as many times as you need to forgive in the supernatural. How many of you right now are holding alt against someone and you believe in God for something important in your life? How many of you are holding grudges against someone and you are and you study praying, God, I will ask you to do this or do this or do that for me. Amen. Well, you need to understand your holding grudges, your holding unforgiveness in your heart is a hindrance to your faith being activated in your life. Because you got to first release yourself from the bondage that you have caused yourself to be ensnared by. When you're holding someone else in bondage because of grudges, because of bitterness, because of hate, you are the one that's been in bondage, not that person, but you are. Because you've allowed the enemy to have access to your soul, to your, to your spirit, amen, to your being. So first of all, you must repent. You repent. And once you repent, now you can go to God and you say, Father, I repent of allowing myself to come and trap with my own words by holding grudges. And I've spoken ill words. And God, my words have been stout against you. And so, Father, I repent. And I ask you to forgive me. Amen. Now, you are in position that your faith can begin working for you. Your faith can begin working for you. How did that happen? When you repented and released the grudges. I mean, you totally turned away from them. You turned away from the anger and resentment that you was harboring in your heart. And now you're free. And he that the Son set free is free indeed. Now you can activate that faith by speaking the word. Notice what he says right here. Verse number verse number uh, 5. And the apostle said unto him, said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, 
Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted into the sea, and it should obey you. Now you see, faith is not only active in your life now, but faith has become your servant. Faith is working for you to carry out the will of God in your life as you learn how to allow faith to correspond with your words and your actions of your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Faith take a hold of those words that is spoken because most of the time we're hoping for that already. And that faith take a hold of those things that is hopeful and bring them into the realm of now. Faith is powerful. When we learn how to use it properly, we can receive God's best in our lives. Hallelujah. Are y'all getting that? Amen, amen, amen. Now, faith is active. We need to realize, friends, that faith is, faith is. And what I mean by faith is, that means faith is now. Faith is not somewhere out in the future. Faith is now. Faith is acting on God's, upon God's word. So many people, however, are waiting for answer to prayer. When God wants your prayers answered now. God wants your prayers answered now. For example, when we when it comes to when it comes to receiving healing or in feeling of the Holy Spirit, too many, too often people just wait for an active faith. You don't have to wait. You can activate your faith. You don't have to wait for for something to happen. You can cause it to happen by stepping into the realm of faith. Into the realm of faith. Faith is now. Amen. Faith is now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, so now, so now when we when we come to God, we must believe that He is. That He's the rewarder of them that digitally seek Him. Now we started in the book of Hebrew. Let's go back once again. I'm coming down to my closing now. In the book of uh, Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 11, once again, this is where we started out at. In Hebrew chapter 11, now notice what he said. Now, faith is the substance of things, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we see now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Another translation reads like this. Faith is giving substance to the things we hope for. Faith is giving substance to the things that we hope for. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I want to take you down here to verse number five. For by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Whew. He had this testimony that he pleased God. So we see faith pleases God. When we operate in faith, it pleases God. Look at verse number six. Verse number six came about because Enoch pleased God because he Operated in faith. And that's why verse number 6 came about. And it said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So we see that 
Enoch had a good testimony because he pleased God. And he says in verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please him. So that means we must have faith if we're going to please God. Can y'all see that? Amen? So Enoch showed us that he pleased God because he had faith. And in verse number in verse number six, it without faith we can't. It's impossible to please him. So faith is important if we're going to please God. We must understand the power that God has given us to operate in, and that power is faith. And if we're going to please God, then we must understand how to activate our faith. God showed us in the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, chapter one. And, he, and Jesus showed us in the book of Mark chapter 11, amen, concerning the fig tree. And then he, and then he gave us all these different scriptures to help to back it all up. I'm telling you that God, glory to God, God wants us to understand that what he has given us is everything that we need to receive every promise he's made to us. Jerdeen, the promise that God made to you is still yes and amen. Gay, the, the same prayer that God gave you is yes and amen. There's nothing that God has said that he will withhold from you. God's promises to you to still are still today. Yes and amen. And amen. So he said in verse number six, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Because you see, how can you even come to God if you don't have faith? Because if you don't believe that God is, then how are you going to come to Him? How are you going to talk to Him? How are you going to trust Him if you don't believe that He is? Amen? So it says, without faith, it is impossible to please. For he that come to God must believe that He is. Must believe that He is what? That He is God. And faith is going to take faith to even believe that. To believe that God is who he said he is. Amen. And that he is a rewarder of them that digitally seek him. Amen. God wants you and me to understand our part and our service in him must be through the realm of faith. Faith has the power to bring all that you're hoping for into the realm of reality. Faith has the ability to set you free from every sickness and every disease that the enemy tried to bring upon you. See, well, we got to die with something. Oh, yeah, you're going to die. You're going to leave this earth, but that don't mean you have to leave sick. You don't have to be sick. That's right. God is good. God is good. And his mercies endure forever. <laughs> Glory to God. My God, that making my head itch. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I want you all to know that when you come to God, just come as a little child. Because see, if I call my daughter to me, she's going to come and she's going to come with an open heart. And she's going to come and she's going to say, what is it, Daddy? Yes, sir. What do you want, Daddy? And then, and then Daddy's going to tell her exactly what he wants. And she's not going to question Daddy. She's going to do, she's going to act on what Daddy said without question. Unless she's angry at me. <laughs> sometimes, you know, these, these young ones, they get angry. They, they get stubborn sometimes. But that's how people are with God. They want to receive from God. And God bring you to himself. And then he begin to begin to speak to your heart. Then as he begins to speak to you, you don't, some, some listen and some don't listen. Some people will listen and some people will not listen. And this is why they're not getting their answers. They're not getting their needs met. Because they won't listen. He gives you every answer to every equation that you bring before him. But are you listening? Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. And I understand, Father, the power that you are showing us in the word of faith. It exercises divine authority in spoken word. We release divine authority through spoken word. Your word is confirmed because of uh, the spoken word. And you bring it to manifestation because of the spoken word. Father, I thank you that faith is being produced in the heart of your people. And now, Father, faith is. Not somewhere in the future, but we are learning that faith is now. And as we act upon it, we will receive the promise now. And so, Father, we thank you for the promise. We thank you for the answer. We release our faith and we declare that every need is met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. I have shared with you today a word that could actually change your life if you would receive it. You know, just like someone believing God for healing. They hear the message on healing, but you got to have a receiver in order to get it. In order for it to become yours. Amen. You have to receive it. You have to open up your heart and say, Father, I receive it. That's mine. I accept that as you speaking directly to me. Glory to God. And God will confirm his word with signs following. So if you receive that word today, then let me hear you. Just, just, just type in the comments, Amen, I receive. Amen, I receive. Type it in the comments. Amen. And let God manifest it in your life. Because you see, I'm just a man. But my father, he is the, the head of the man that I have become through his word and through him. God is, his word is true. That's right, Jordan. Everyone else needs to say the same thing that you said. If they expect, my God, the power of God is all over me right now. I'm sensing in my spirit that many are receiving. Many are receiving. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release the same anointing that is falling upon me right now upon everyone that is receiving. I release this anointing right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, to lift the burdens and destroy yoke and to drive sickness and diseases out of their bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I speak to that demon spirit. I command you to go from that person right now. You spirit of infirmity, go in Jesus' name. And Father, let the spirit of faith rise up within them. And let them walk by faith and not by sight. Nothing doubting, only believing. Only believing. And I thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Well, hallelujah. Well, we're going to receive our offering now. Amen. We're going to receive our offering now. For those of you that would like to sow your seed through the internet, you may go to my website, LarryBergenMinistries.com. Amen. And there you will find the address where you can plant your seed of faith. Amen. Just like I'm teaching on faith, you need to plant a seed of faith. Amen. Glory to God. Alan, God bless you. I see you. I'll be there in Decatur very soon. Very soon. I'll be there in Decatur, Alabama very soon. Amen. 
So those of you that are sowing your seed right now, sow that seed of faith and believe God for full manifestation. See, that seed is saying, God, I believe that word is true. I believe that everything that was spoken, Lord God, I believe you are speaking directly to me. That word was that word was for me personally, and I receive it. Amen. And so as you receive that word, go to my website, LarryBergenMinistries.com. That's LarryBergenMinistries.com and plant your seed of faith. Amen. Plant your seed of faith. And my wife, she's going to she gonna type the word, LarryBergenMinistries.com. She's going to type the website through her, through her uh, site there so that you can all see where to go and plant your seed. Amen. You, she gonna type the website down there so y'all can y'all can get it, and you can go and plant your seed. And remember, if you have a prayer request, when you go plant your seed, there's also a button for your prayer request. Send us your prayer request and let us pray the prayer of faith. Let us come in agreement with you, praying the prayer of faith. Amen. That every need to be met, whether it's in your relationship, whether it's in your marriage. Amen. Whether it's in your uh, on your business, your your job, amen, your children's, amen, restoration, whatever your need may be, let us come in agreement with you. Amen. We want to put our prayer warriors to pray for you. Amen. So plant your seed, send us your prayer request, and let us get our prayer warriors to come in agreement with your prayer request. God bless you. Amen. As you plant your seed. Amen. The Bible said, give, and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give them to your bosom. My wife has just posted the website where you go to my website and plant your seed. Amen. Glory to God. So go to, use that website, www.larrybergerministries.com. www.larrybergerministries.com and plant your seed. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. And uh, you will also find on that website where you can send us your prayer request. Amen. And let us come in agreement with you for your prayer need. Amen. And we're gonna get. Up, we're gonna put the intercessors. We're gonna get our intercessors to pray in with us and in, and interceding on your behalf. Amen. For your prayer need. So, let us do that for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody got their offering together? Amen. Get your offering together. Glory to God. The Bible says, in the book of Luke, chapter 6, In verse 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, sh and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. And it says in the book of... Glory to God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. But thou shalt remember But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto thy fathers as it is this day. God wants to establish you in the covenant. Amen. The covenant is for you. He wants to he want you to be established in the covenant. Amen. Then it says here and the, the twenty eighth chapter. 
And verse 1 says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Wherever you go, the blessing that God has prepared for you to receive is going to come upon you and overtake you. So take my website, www.larrybergenministries.com, go to my website and plant your seed, release your faith, and I'm going to join you in faith, and I'm going to get my prayer warriors, those that will come in agreement with us, and we're going to pray the prayer of faith concerning your need, and we are going to agree together, and we're going to see God move on your behalf. Amen. God love you, and so do we. Amen. I'm going to pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, for everyone that is given today, everyone that is sowing their seed today, Lord God. I pray for the I pray, Father, as they release those tithes and those offerings, Father, that they will experience a supernatural, a supernatural manifestation of your word. I declare it now in Jesus' name, a debt reduction. Whew. Now that just came right out of my spirit. A debt reduction. Amen. God, you're going to call Oshay Lalabakaya. Some, you're going to cause debt to be reduced. You're going to cause some debt to be eradicated. You're going to cause some debt to be forgiven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus, I decree it. I declare it now in Jesus' name. Some people's debt is going to disappear because they acted on their faith in this message. Because of this message. Remember. Enoch. He had a testimony. That he pleased God. Because he had faith. And he said. If you don't have faith. you can't. It's impossible to please God. So release your faith. Release that offering. Release that tithe. Go to my website. Release that faith. Release your offering. And believe God for your breakthrough. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Glory to God. Amen. Now, we're going to pray for you. Everyone that have a special prayer request, we're going to pray for you right now. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my dear sister, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that your hand continually rests upon her life. I declare, Father, divine health and healing. I take the word of God, Father, and I declare, Father, that you said that you bore our sicknesses and you carried our diseases and by your stripes we are healed. You sent your word, Lord God, to heal us and to deliver us from our destruction. I declare your word is true and I stand on your word by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Anybody else want prayer? You want prayer, Lisa? Okay. Amen. Well, let's pray for these that are listening by the internet. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that is with us by the internet, those that are with us, Lord God, I declare and decree favor supernatural favor in the name of Jesus. Someone is believing God for a new home and you've been denied twice. That is just another step to your yes. Don't be discouraged. Don't get, uh, don't allow doubt to fill your heart. Go again. Your yes is still in front of you. But if you quit now, you will never get that yes. I remember when we were believing God for a house. We didn't have 
the finances didn't have the uh, credit, not good credit. But we kept believing, we kept believing, and we kept looking for houses, amen, even when we didn't have a house. Let me tell you something, when we didn't have nothing to get one with, that's when we got it. <laughs> that's when we got it. Now we're living in our, in our own home that God has given and blessed us with, and our credit is very good now. Amen. You may have bad credit and you think that there's no way you can get you a house. You let God be concerned about that. You just release your faith and you just start looking for that house right now. And God will bring you to a place where you thought was never possible. He did it for me and my family. He'll do it for you. Amen. God bless you. We love you all. and We thank God for you. Don't forget to join us later on in the week. Amen. Don't forget also, we're going to be fasting next week. We're going to be fasting this coming week. On, let me show you now. We're going to start our fasting on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yep, that's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We're going to be fasting and praying this week. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And we're going to be praying the Daniel prayer three times a day. We're going to be fasting and praying this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Amen. And we're going to be praying the Daniel prayer. Amen. Three times a day we're going to be praying. And we're going to come back to you prior then and give you more instructions. So please, when you see me come online, you need to put me in your browser that when I come online, you need to like. So when I come online, that you will automatically know that I'm online. Amen. So that you can be alert. We love you guys. We thank God for you. I pray the peace of God that's a pass of all understanding be upon your hearts and your mind. God bless you until the next time. This is Pastor Larry saying, have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. faces I had a lot more faces this last night